Okay, welcome everybody. It's Saturday, uh, post Cinco de Mayo, May 6th in Los Angeles, California, 2017. Um, can you hear me right now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, so I, I, I'm Eleanor Silverstein and um, I flew in from Orange County, California. No, I drove. So, and no stress, by the way, very nice drivers on a Saturday, so I'm very thankful. Um, and you know what, maybe I will come and stand up on the stage, let's see. If I stand up on the stage, hold on, ready? Woohoo, it worked, okay, good. So, um, Beth was talking to you a little bit about stress and what, what you can do for it, and I am here to say, as Beth is, there is a lot that you can do for yourself. And the Feldenkrais Method is absolutely beautiful work with creating balance and harmony within the way that your whole nervous system functions. And um, as a person in neuroscience, people like to break us down into parts and they say we have a sympathetic nervous system, which is where we have fight and flight or your heart rate beats up, uh, beats faster. And we have parasympathetic, which is the part where your nervous system calms down. And you get that in yoga and you get that in Feldenkrais and you get that in meditation and you get that in all of these things that are wonderfully calming. And when you live in a city or whatever it is with your lifestyle, sometimes we tend to go a little bit more into sympathetic overdrive, which is stress loading. And so she described to you a little bit and you did a little bit of the heart hug. So I want, to, I want to tell you, if you'd like to sit down, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about why the heart hug works, and then we're going to revisit it again. And the woman who created this, as Beth said, her name is Linda Tellington Jones. She's been a teacher of mine since I've been 19 years old. I'm nowhere near that anymore. And, um, and she is a very, very dear friend of mine. She started doing this work with horses. And she was studied by the top experts as she was an expert in her field with horses. And I started taking this into doing this with people. And then she was bringing this in with people. And it is amazing the easy self-care touch that you can do for yourself and you can do for someone else or you can do for your pets. So this work goes for every living being that you love. And as a herpetologist, I did this with snakes. So I love my snakes, I love my reptiles and amphibians. I love my kitties and my doggies and my husband and my children too, and my mother and my brother, okay. So yes. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about that touch is when you do the heart hug, it's so simple. It was really simple when you did it, wasn't it? You did gliding the skin, so your hand is on your chest, and you glide the skin a circle and a quarter, and you see you're not moving muscle, you're not moving bone, but you're moving and gliding your skin over the top of your skeleton. And you know what that does? We measured it it causes oxytocin to be produced. Measurable amounts of oxytocin. Oxytocin is the hormone and neurotransmitter for love, health, and healing. Healing. It could be healing your heart and your soul. It could be healing a wound, a physical wound. It can be an injury to a muscle or a bone. I have a dog that we um, adopted. It's always something. And she has severe irritable bowel disease, but she also gets severe acid reflux. And go figure, she was adopted into the home in which I teach extensively about acid reflux. <laughs> and I just do a couple of these heart hugs one, 
with a dog as we would on a horse. We'll one hand on the chest, the other hand behind the shoulder blades. It takes maybe 20 seconds and her suffering and misery stops. Now, how do I know when she's having acid reflux? Have you ever seen a dog when they eat peanut butter? What do they do? Yeah. Right? OK, well, hers does it differently because there's no peanut butter. It comes out like this. You hear the popping? Gorgeous female standard poodle pops her lips, and the tongue just comes straight out. So it's not a lick, comes straight out which is an extension of the esophagus. So come in, do a little bit of the heart hug on her, 20 seconds, it's good. And it's not good for five minutes, it's good for hours. Because it's, it's neurotransmission and rewiring and reworking and reprogramming the nervous system to learn through touch. Because that neurotransmitter starts to make sense. We can do this for ourselves. So when you glide your skin, and it needs to be gentle, not deep, it's gliding the skin over tissue, over bone, it produces that oxytocin. And in the world, isn't that a nice thing that we pass around the hormone that's kind of catchy and the neurotransmitter that's amazing for retraining our whole being for health, healing, and happiness. So that's not all. Have any of you ever get a belly ache, a tummy ache? A couple of people, belly aches. OK, yeah, I ate too much. Mexican food yesterday. I had a belly ache after lunch. OK, I'm sorry. Can you hear me in the back? I realized I was quiet. So when, OK, so we're going to start back up here revisiting the heart hug. And when you put your hands on your chest, one hand on top of the other, and you put on your sternum. If you choose to put over your heart, go for it. But you can put it right over your sternum. And <sighs> yeah, first we start like that. And then you glide this skin over your bone and tissue underneath in the circle and a quarter. So we actually start, if there was a clock on you, and 6 o'clock were down below, and 12 o'clock were above, Move it starting at 6, going all the way around to 12, all the way back around to 6, and then glide it back up a quarter of a circle, and then slowly let that down. And do this a few times. We're really going to work to open up those receptor sites to create the possibility for healing that happens on a cellular level. We're now doing studies in measuring healing on the level of the DNA, simply by doing this. And you start at 6 o'clock, going all the way around the clock, gliding the skin all the way around the clock. You may go clockwise, and you may go counterclockwise. You can experiment and explore which way feels better for you. And you start at 6 and go all the way around the clock, until you go back to six and then back up a quarter of a clock, quarter of the circle, and then let it glide back down. Okay. 
and then let that rest. Now, some people in here have studied this with me, so they're already doing the next step. So this time, start down at 6 o'clock and glide your skin around the clock, a circle all the way back to 6. And when you start to come up to that quarter of the circle, Breathe in, let yourself smile in that quarter of a circle, and then let the breath come out. And so you're going from six all the way around the clock and when you come back to 6 o'clock, you take a breath in, bring a grin on your face, the softness in your eyes, the curling up of your lips, and then letting that down. Give yourself the opportunity to do this several times. And if you would like, you can move your hands to another area on your chest. So as you do this several times, you can start to move your hands to another area. Starting at 6 o'clock, going all the way around the clock, bringing in that breath, and then letting it out through pursed lips, Letting yourself do this. As you come to back to six, you bring in a breath through your nose. And then you let it back out through your lips. <clears throat> As a scientist, I like to explain a little bit about what's happening because if you understand it, it sometimes makes it even more significant as you experience it. But as we breathe in through our nose, you have the most amazing receptor sites in your nasal passages for nitric oxide. Not nitrous oxide, which is laughing gas, although we could smile and laugh, but it's nitric oxide receptor sites. Do you know what those do? They vasodilate. They open up your blood vessels. What is, ha what is the definition of high blood pressure? You could say it. Yeah, narrowing, tightening, squeezing down of the blood vessels for whatever reason. It could be because there's toxins, there's metals, um, there's a family thing, it's a, it's a stress thing. Listen, breathing in through the nose, filling in those nitric oxide receptor sites will vasodilate. That's just the chemical part. There's neurological things that it does too. So, Again, bring your hands to your chest and a few times starting at 6 o'clock, gliding around the clock. And even though we started at the chest, go now down towards your esophagus, down towards your belly, esophagus, the tube that you swallow food down. From your mouth that you swallow food down that goes to your stomach. And you go six and around the clock. And then all the way back when you get to six o'clock, breathe in through your nose, fill in those nitric oxide receptor sites. Allow yourself to smile. Bring a grin on your face. 
and then let it out slowly through pursed lips. It gives a little back pressure back into the lungs. In Feldenkrais lessons, we're very specific about not being specific. But in this lesson, I'm being specific. Exactly. I have to buck the system somehow. <laughs> and now you can take it around to your digestive organs. Starting at 6 o'clock, bring it all the way around. And it may go differently. You know, because you don't have a skeleton there, you're just skin over muscle. So you feel how easy on your sternum it's easy to glide the skin? It goes differently around the belly. But it does because soft, gentle touch, even soft, gentle touch that doesn't glide, soft, gentle touch produces oxytocin the hormone and neurotransmitter for health, healing, and happiness. It's so cheap. It's so easy. And the reason that Beth did this with you, the reason that I'm coming back in and doing it again and again in these multiple ways is because this will be an amazing gift to give yourself, yes, when you're driving. Because all you need to do is take a couple of fingertips and just go a little bit like this around here, and your system will get it, because you're wiring it in here. Does that make sense? We're wiring you for more happiness and more ability for the body to heal. So. Please lie down and rest. How many, just raise a hand, how many in here actually felt like you were dying to lie down? <laughs> yeah, wow, that's a lot of hands. And we weren't doing big work, were we? Oh, wait a minute, yes we were. Because this little thing, these little things are big work. Because you are asking yourself to really be attentive to all of this, to all of you, to everything about you. And by the way, healing takes time. Healing takes work. Some people say it's easier to be stressed. But once you learn how to take care of yourself in this way, this is actually easier. Because then it takes a moment to check in for yourself. So like you did before in the other lesson earlier, where you just scan and notice your body lying along the floor. Bring your hands on to your chest, please. And start at 6 o'clock. It's still down below. And 12 o'clock is still up toward your head. And starting at 6 o'clock, gliding in with joy and happiness in your heart and in your soul and in your cells. Around the clock, talking to your cells in your body. Because this really works. This gentle way of touching and moving and listening really works. And when you get back to 6 o'clock and you start to come up towards that quarter of a circle, bring in the breath through your nose, the smile on your face so easily and gently, and then let it out through pursed lips. Because you see, when we purse the lips, in this case, not always, we slow our exhalation. 
and the act of slowing your exhalation brings very excellent health to your heart. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Has anybody in this room heard of the saying called heart rate variability? Good. Heart rate variability is the measurement of the ability for the heart rate to speed up and the heart rate to come back to slow. And it's that measurement between the difference of the two. It's, it's called recuperation. How quickly can your heart go from being really fast, which it needs to do, to really slow to somewhere in between? How well does your heart recuperate back to that place that's neutral? And sometimes people take drugs. A lot of seniors are given drugs to slow their heart rate down. But, but it doesn't allow for the heart rate to go up. So what happens is suddenly, two weeks after they're taking that drug to slow the heart rate down so that they don't have a heart attack or something, it ends up where the person can't walk upstairs or they can't walk from their car to the market very easily, they get winded because the heart rate isn't able to go fast down to slow to somewhere in between. It's, it's not being given that opportunity to recuperate. So the doctor has decided you need this. So doing this has allowed us to go about the back door. We still can increase the heart rate variability, not increasing your heart rate, but increasing heart rate variability by doing this gliding gentle touch. So you get to do what you need to do with your doctor and your body and cells get to function the way they were designed to function. That's a gift. Now, you know there's plenty of foods that are high in nitric oxide. Did you know that? So root vegetables like beets, celery, other vegetables, root, you can look it up and you'll find. And if you make your diet a little bit richer in foods that are high in nitric oxide, your, heart, your blood vessels will vasodilate. They will open up. They will move oxygenated red blood cells through your arteries easier. You will be a happier, healthier human. And by the way, it goes to all parts of the body, men. Doesn't matter what your age is. Because when it's not working down there, because I'm fascinated with that, um, when it's not working down there for men, it's because there's low nitric oxide. And that will often come with mouth breathers. So that is why I'm being specific in this kind of Feldenkrais lesson. Beth, you never thought I would go there. <laughs> but it is part of us being human. And that is why in this kind of lesson, I am being specific in asking you, please, in this lesson, as you do your heart hug, breathe in through your nose. Really give the gift of nitric oxide receptors. Vasodilate and let it out slowly through your mouth so that that slows down your heart rate. And then when you're ready, go ahead, let your hands down and rest. Beth, remind me what time I have this till. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So roll to your side. Please come up to sitting. Welcome. You're in the front of the room. 
<laughs> so now, please, bring your hands, because I promise you, you will remember this forever now. To bring your hands onto your heart. Did you know now scientists are saying the heart is another nervous system? Did you know that they're now saying that the heart is another nervous system? So you know how um, the brain is called the central nervous system. Your arms and legs are peripheral, periphery, part of the peripheral nervous system. The guts, where I focus, is the enteric nervous system because it connects up to the brain. Now they're saying that the heart in itself is a complete whole nervous system. So, of course, looking back embryologically, all the way back to the embryo, I find this curious because the cells of the heart and the cells of the brain come from the same cells called neurites. And up in the brain, they become neurons when it develops the brain. And when it becomes the heart, it becomes the heart as neurites. So healing your heart is the first place for healing. This is why Beth and I decided you started and I'm coming back in on it. It's too good. Whew. So hands on your heart. Give yourself that love. And starting at 6 o'clock and gliding it all the way around the clock, moving your skin so beautifully over your skeleton, saying, thank you, all the systems that turn on and take care of me. And you get back down to 6 o'clock. And as you start to glide it back up, you breathe in through your nose, because you know what that does. You bring a grin on your face. Well, because that just makes you happy. And then you let it out through pursed lips because that slows your heart rate down and gives you heart rate variability, which is part of healing of all of our systems in our body. And remember, as you come to that, back to that quarter of the circle, you bring in the grin on your face. And I ask you, lift a finger. Does bringing that grin on your face become even easier now? Is it easier than it was before? Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine? It's easy to smile. It's easy to grin. It's easy to feel that lightness on your face. But I ask you, do you feel that lightness in the rest of you a little bit lighter? So what would happen if we explore this a little bit differently? So you ready? What if we were to take these circle and a quarters and just outline one eye. So you feel the orbit around the eye, the bone structure around your eye. And you're going to do a circle and a quarter, slide the hand over, and a circle and a quarter, and slide the hand over, and a circle and a quarter. So you see you're doing, it's so small, it's, it's smaller than the size of an eraser on a pencil. The circle and a quarter is like smaller than an eraser on the end of a pencil. And then you glide it. Don't take the fingers off. Glide it. And outline your whole eye. And ask yourself, am I breathing or am I holding my breath? And I invite you to breathe. We can do it without a lot, 
but we can't do without oxygen. And I mean really good oxygen, yeah? You know, like really just give yourself the gift to remember that you are a being that brings in oxygen and lets it out and all the other stuff that cleans it because it's a part of a detoxification system of our cells. And do this just a couple of times and eventually outlining, outlining <laughs> the whole orbit, the whole bone structure of your eye. So if this were the eye, I'm drawing it with my hand in the air, and I did a circle and a quarter, and I glide it, and I start at 6 o'clock, circle and a quarter, and then let it glide down, and then glide over again to the side. And do you see what I'm saying? So I'm circle and a quarter and slide it. I'm keeping contact because there is something in myself of me touching me or me touching you or you touching another being and keeping that contact that does something that reminds us more fully who we are. <laughs> and when you finish, just let your hands rest and notice if there is a difference of how you sense yourself on that eye than the other. And if you do, raise a hand. Yeah. Does it, does it feel bigger or does it feel smaller? And call it out. Bigger. Did someone say smaller? Smaller. OK. When you say smaller, was it like snug? Did it feel more? What did you feel? Yeah. Wow. Cool. And for bigger, did it feel like wider, more expansive? Darn good facelift. <laughs> Nobody going to make money on that but you. <laughs> Do the other eye. Quick, quick. <laughs> or you'll look like uh, Picasso. <laughs> so you can do this around your eyes, around your nostrils, for those who have sleep apnea, and around the lips. You can also do this around the whole structure of the face. And, and when you do it, I'm going to sit down and hopefully you can see me. One sec. I got everything in my back pocket. So hold on. So it looks something like this. Do you see how I'm resting? my hand on my elbow. And now, you know how you kind of just sit there and go la, 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 you know, with your, your chin in your hand? OK, but you see, now my chin's not in my hand, but I'm resting my elbow on my hand, and I'm using the pads of my finger to go all the way around my face. So this is a beautiful thing to do when you're sitting at your computer or you're anywhere because no one's going to think twice about seeing you do this. So you just, ah, oh, thank you. What goes around comes around. Yeah. I love it. Okay. We help each other. So do you see? So look, I can even sit like this. I can stand. I can do anything, but I'm touching. And do you see my thumb is still in contact with me? So I'm not floating my thumb up in the air. My thumb is touching me. Because remember what Beth said about the thumb and the nerve innervations there. So what happens is if we ex hyperextend the thumb, we're going to cause um, put ourselves into a little bit more stress mode unbeknownst to us. So we're just going to rest the thumb and make the circles. And do you see I can do here? I can do here, I can go around the side of my face, I can go here, do you see? I can change hands, and I can do the circles. But do you see what I'm saying? It's a great gift. So these are things that you can do for yourself, but you know where else you can do this? It is really cool. Beth, hold this for me. <laughs> and you can do this for somebody. So let's say you have a pain. Let's say maybe the pain is somewhere along the arm. But let's say, let's start with it's not a pain. You can outline your limbs 
going with the circle and a quarter touches, gliding the skin. So I do a circle and a quarter, outlining my forearm, right? And I can go all the way down and all the way back up, circle and a quarter, circle and a quarter, gliding it all the way back up. And I invite you to do that and feel how the difference of that arm feels like. Because you are speaking to a very important part of the brain that is the development of the image of yourself. If every child is touched like this, they won't, it'll help dopamine and opiate receptor sites so that they won't need to look outside themselves for these things to quiet their system, to sense themselves, or to stimulate their system. Do you understand the importance of what I'm saying? Because this is really, really important. So when we look at people who have health problems, or addiction issues, or, or, or developmental issues, drawing back the image of ourself to ourself gives us back to our nervous system, our brain, our soul, our being of who we are. And that is the greatest gift we can give ourselves and give to other people. And sometimes, for some people, it's an uphill battle, but this is an amazing tool for them to use when they're feeling the moment of the stress because they jump outside of their body and how they feel. This will keep you in. This will stimulate your sense of your image of yourself. And this creates healing. And hey, if it increases your heart rate variability, meaning the ability for your body to bounce back, whew, isn't that the definition of healthy aging? And isn't that why you guys are here? Yeah. So with that, I send you all off with a heart hug and say thank you. Wow, I'm so relaxed. Um, and I didn't even do it, but I heard it. Uh, so we have a little 